way to one of the major attractions of the Yorkshire Dales, Malham Cove. At a hundred feet high and nearly a thousand feet across, it is a spectacular limestone formation that draws visitors to the park from all around the world. I've come to see an animal that has made its home here, the peregrine falcon, and I spoke to Sophie Cade of the RSPB who runs the peregrine viewpoint. We have nine pairs of peregrine falcons breeding in the Yorkshire Dales National Park, one of which is here at Malham. They are basically varying success rates really on their breeding. The ones at Malham have been really, really successful. They've fledged 35 young in the last 18 years between the different pairs we've had in that time, so that's been fantastic. The, the population in the country is stable at the moment. Some areas will find that, that the population is increasing where there's lots of food abundant and where there's suitable nesting sites. Other areas, there's places where peregrines should be and they aren't there for whatever reason. That could be that nest sites are being disturbed or it could be to do with conflicts and luck with land use. Peregrines have had their fair share of conservation issues and were actually endangered in the 1960s. Certain pesticides, such as DDT, built up in the food chain which prevented their eggs from forming properly. More recently, conflicts with the pigeon racing and game shooting communities resulted in numerous birds being found dead. But thankfully, they have since recovered and the RSPB estimate there are well over a thousand breeding pairs in the UK. The site at Malham is perfect for peregrines and also provides a very accessible site for visitors to see these wonders of the National Park. The views you get here are really second to none in terms of you can have a certain perspective from the ground so you can look up at them and use our telescopes and things to be able to get a good view of them perching but then also you can go to the top of the cove and walk around at the top there and get more amazing views uh, which you just don't get anywhere else. You don't get to be on the same level as a peregrine very often when they're literally flying around right above your head. You can look down on them flying and that's just absolutely fantastic. The birds play an important role in attracting visitors to the park, but they also have an ecological importance. Birds of prey particularly are really good indicators of the health of an ecosystem. So when you have um, birds of prey such as peregrines or you've got kites or buzzards, they're a really good indicator of uh, what's going on in that area generally. And with such an idyllic spot, I asked Sophie what role the RSPB and the National Park Authority play in their conservation. In terms of the work the National Park do, that's a full year round job with his wildlife protection officers which will keep an eye on the different peregrine sites um, and generally try and keep a track of what's going on with the population throughout the year and then the RSPB kind of become more involved during the breeding season when we're setting up this viewpoint and bringing the public engagement into it more. Being able to see these amazing birds so conveniently it's easy to forget how important support from the general public is. The public support is so important for projects like this. In a sense, it's one of the, you know, one of the major reasons we run the project is to inform the public, to educate them, to just give them a nice experience, really, so that they can connect with nature. But could such a dependency on support be a problem, especially now in times of a financial downturn? 
we've actually found that even though financial climate's not looking that great at the moment, people are still really keen to fund conservation. Um, I think that the great thing about, especially a site like this, is watching these birds and feeling that feeling of, wow, this is amazing. It kind of brings people together. Which is great news. With slow signs of recovery from the recession, it's important to consider the challenges faced by conservation today. I think public involvement is going to become more and more crucial as the years go on because funding from external sources and from the government is dwindling. And so, you know, if we want to continue doing projects like this, we want to continue looking after at nature around us and these fantastic birds, then we all need to kind of pull together and, and do that as one. I've met some amazing people working to protect a wonderful place. Though I can't help but think, I have barely scratched the surface.